Hey guys, welcome back to Token Tech. Today I just want to go over some of the things that I've learned through my Zen 2 journey. And really quickly before we begin, I did return my 3700X. It seems like it was defective. I was having a lot of issues with temperature. It was even thermal, like thermal shutdown happened to me once. And I ran a stability test yesterday and it failed the stability test on default settings. So I just took it right back to Micro Center. I wanted to just swap it out, but they didn't have anything else in stock. So the only thing they had left was one 3800x so I had to get a 3800x pay 70 more bucks but it is what it is at this point um, and I popped it in my system and tried messing with it things are much better but we'll get more into that a little later what I want to address first is this right here what you're looking at is save voltages for Zen 2 this came out a week ago this would have been really helpful if I found it a week ago but for whatever reason I couldn't find it um, until now anyways what this outlines is something known as electro electro migration, right? And this will damage and cause your CPU to get worse and eventually die over time, right? And to help mitigate that on idle or low low current loads, it will run the CPU as you can see right here at a higher voltage because this is a low current load about 1.47 I've seen mine boost go all the way up to 1.5 which is crazy and then under high current loads or heavy workloads right like rendering or something it'll drop down to a safe value of 1.325 that's the maximum safe now why am I outlining this well one it's spiking up to 1.47 volts on idle is going to definitely cause temperature to increase so your idle temperatures are going to seem a bit warmer just because of this. But the thing is, idle temperatures aren't that big of a deal because temperatures really aren't a problem until they start to affect your performance. And going from instead of 30 degrees or 35 degrees idle to 40 or 45 degrees idle really isn't that big of a difference. Okay. Other reason I'm bringing this up is if you want to manually overclock like I have, you want to make sure that you're not going above 1.325, otherwise you're going to start causing uh, wear and tear on your CPU and you do not want to do that. So make sure that you don't go above 1.325 on your daily overclock, all right? Mine I have set to 1.3, other people are doing a little lower at 1.28. It's all depending on where you want that overclock to be and um, how much heat you can handle with your cooling solution and your case. All right, now that's out of the way. This will be linked in the description down below, so make sure to go check it out if you want more information on that. And also go check Level 1 Tech if you aren't already. Wendell from there has done a great video talking about this and more. Anyways, let's move on. So what have I done? This was what I, I did earlier today. Um, I basically was running stress tests all day, finding what was the best solution for me. And what I found was an auto, sorry, a manual overclock to what you can see up here in the right corner. 4.4 gigahertz. Now, just so you know, I could not do this on my 3700X. However, again, that was a messed up chip, so your mileage may vary. I still think it's not worth the 70 bucks, but just so you know, um, this was achievable on my 3800X, 4.4 gigahertz at 1.3 volts, which is pretty good, nice, reasonable voltage. And as you can see, our CPU temperature, which is down here, CPU temperature was 76 degrees, and you can see that also in IDA64. IDA64 puts a load on the CPU, and after an hour, as you can see right here, we were seeing temperatures that were going up and down between 75 and 76 degrees Celsius, and that was in my room, which was kept and maintained at um, 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius, all right? So pretty reasonable all of that together and this is a stress test under games your CPU is gonna run cooler than this idle it's gonna be cooler than this um, even rendering will probably be cooler than this it's only gonna be really heavy loads that are gonna make it go up to this And again this was after an hour now again I do have a custom loop so that's you want to take that into consideration if you have an air cooler you might be hitting 80 to 83 degrees Celsius but a custom liquid cooling loop you can see this and this is again a stress test I want to make that clear these temperatures are decent for a stress test. Again, look at any other review. A lot of them ran IDA, some of them ran Prime 95, some of them ran Blender, and they were seeing temperatures above 75, some even above 80, some around 83. So again, for stress tests, these are pretty good numbers. And again, this shows that my overclock was stable. 
Now, when we get over here to Cinebench, you can see with that overclock, I was doing 2312. 2312, 100 points above the best I could get on my 3700X. Again, that chip was a little weird, so take these numbers with a grain of salt, but I did do pretty well with the 3800X. 2312 is a pretty respectable score for this. Um, again, 1.3 volts. I might be able to get a higher overclock out of it if I really push it, but I don't want to really push it. I really like where it is right now. I'm happy with this. This is pretty good. I'm very happy with this. Something I want to make clear. So some people have been tossing around this idea of running it at 1.2 volts or even 1.1 volt. What I want to make very clear with that is when you do that, yes, you will see it boost up to its rated boost clock, 4.4, 4.3, 4.5, and maybe even higher than what you were seeing before because boost is more reliant on temperature than anything else. So when it's running a lot cooler because you're running less voltage, it'll boost up higher. But what you do see is even at those sustained boost clocks, because that's what I saw when I put mine to 1.2 volts, sustained high 4.4, maybe even 4.5 gigahertz, my Cinebench score was trash. It was 1760 something. That's like 1800X score, okay? Don't do that. Every time you overclock or undervolt or mess with settings, don't only check your stability, don't only check your temperatures, but check your performance, okay? Because sometimes things might look all right, and then when you run your, your, your benchmark, you'll see the score and you'll be able to compare that against your other scores and see if your, bench, if your overclock or undervolt actually improved anything or if it just made things worse or made things unstable. And this is something you should do no matter what. If it's a graphics card, a CPU, what have you, make sure you are testing your your changes. Anyways, that's going to be it for me. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. How have have you uh, enjoyed this new launch? Have you gotten the chips? Have they treated you well? Anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next one.